Okay, so coming up next is my anomaly's talk, Conference Submissions for the Faint of Heart. And we're going to be telling you, hopefully, some tips and tricks on how to do better call for paper submissions. And we just wanted to make sure we did a shout out to the Diana Initiative sponsors. So I guess to introduce ourselves, um, I've been a CFP reviewer for IT events as well as information security events for the past few years. My day job is with GitLab where I work on a software composition analysis team. And obviously I work here at the Diana Initiative. Uh, I'm a senior technology advocate for Splunk. Essentially, uh, I'm a professional storyteller, so I get to go out and I'm paid to talk about best practices and other things about technology. My current ballywick right now is DevSecOps, um, but also it keeps me as a professional conference attendee and speaker. So I've been doing the CFP review gigs for a number of conferences over the past couple of years. Uh, the cool thing about that is it gives me, it gives me a chance to find out what the pulse of what people want to have a talk about, um, and have an interest in. So, uh, you know, if there's a particular, uh, topic du jour, uh, seeing that across multiple conferences, get an idea of what people want to talk about and see the quality of those. Uh, it used to be some technology leadership. So I was a C-level technology exec, but started out as a UI designer and system administrator. So you too can be in this role. I guess the first thing is, what exactly is a CFP? Well, usually it stands for a call for presentations. It can also mean call for papers if it's a more academic conference. And it's really just a request for content. There is an event who would like to have things and you then submit and pitch for that. Now a conference can have a mixture of stuff. They can invite specific people. For example, here at the Diana Initiative, we invite our keynotes because we seek them out. It could be 100% people who submit to a CFP. And also they could have some unconferences. There could be sponsored sessions like happens at Black Hat. So it really can be all sorts of different things. But the main goal, if you ever see a CFP and there's lots of sites like CFP time that collect them and you can see them all listed is that a conference is seeking input from the community in order to make sure that they have a bunch of things to show at their event. And it could be a very specific call or it could be a very broad call. So behind the curtains, what exactly happens? Uh, it really depends. You could have a variety of people reviewing the things. In fact, you want a variety of people. I know that our CFP chair put in the effort to make sure that there was somebody from red team, blue team, people experienced in different areas so that we were all reading the submissions from a different point of view. And you, that doesn't just apply for areas of expertise. It could be experience levels. You can also blind, which means that the reviewers don't actually get to see the name of the person who submitted or not blind, which is what a lot of conferences do. You can also have a mixture of both where maybe some of the people get to see who it is and then the second round of people uh, don't, for example. Uh, you can also do where all the reviewers read all of the things, which is what Diana did, or you have it where people are responsible for a specific track or specialization area. And so you might be a subject matter expert tapped to read a specific set of things. Like if you're all about Kubernetes, you might have to read all the Kubernetes talks. And what are they actually responsible for? Well, there's gonna be some specific questions they're trying to answer. And they have to read each one of the submissions and it's kind of like when you get a whole bunch of resumes for a job, they're reading it pretty quick. And then they're asking them themselves, does that answer the questions we've been asked? And in our particular case, it was, what is the technical merit? What is the fit to our specific conference based on our audience and our theme? And just is it interesting? Does it catch your attention? Would you want to come and see this talk? And I can say that there was a lot of talks here that I want to see, and I'm getting to see some of them, but I can't wait for the recordings to come out. 
so this is my section here. Uh, you know, you know, as uh, Nicole mentioned, uh, one of the things that actually sp uh, spawned us giving this talk was uh, the variety of both topics covered uh, for submissions for the Dana Initiative, but also the quality. Um, one of the things I've I've run into was the the fact that um, you know, as a reviewer, I've I'd seen all manner of submissions, and uh, figured this was worthwhile for a meta talk. So one of those uh, cases is, is, you know, do these talks fit our event? Uh, some of them come from uh, rather novice uh, submitters. Maybe their first time submitting because they figured this was a, a good venue for it. Uh, other times they may be folks like me who are professional speakers who get a chance to kind of go out and uh, kind of do the rounds. Um, so one of the, the things is here is uh, you, you need to do your submission like a resume. This is this is what people will see of you. They won't if it's a blind, they won't see a picture, they won't see a name. Uh, but uh, your points need to be succinct. They got to be clear and they got to be quick. Uh, most times they may even have a limit on uh, the length of your abstract. Uh, could be under 150 words or you know under 500 for the entire submission. Um, the other key thing is understanding your audience. Um, you know, uh, sometimes you may already find out who you're presenting to. Uh, could limit to say. 500 people in the DC area where I'm from. Uh, it could be a virtual online one where you don't know anybody. Um, but this doesn't mean you need to dumb everything down uh, just because it's very general. Uh, the fact is, is uh, some conferences are very specific about wanting highly technical content or uh, content geared for executives. So it's uh, very important that as you submit stuff that it actually applies to your audience. Um, but then again, too, is as you deliver your content, think about it. If you do get accepted, uh, uh, you know, working your content that so that it's actually accessible uh, by everybody who may potentially be there. Uh, you can generalize it, um, but you know, you can also uh, try to cover some unknowns. So if you know that uh, uh, you know the attendees are going to be virtual and you have no idea, uh, you can kind of generally keep it broad. But uh, you know, if you find a need to go into specifics, uh, you can do that as well because you, that may attract uh, folks that know your very uh, much a subject matter expert in something and hoping to get some new nuggets. Um, the other thing is too is uh, basically you know as uh, you're each each you know you're submitting this eventually a, a virtual paper uh, you know back in the before times when uh, people used to physically go to conferences uh, you could submit stuff uh, you know in a, a paper envelope but here now you're submitting it through a, a virtual uh, call for papers uh, but the key thing is they want to make sure you have the knowledge and skills uh, for what you're presenting uh, that you know the subject matter uh, down pat uh, you could be new uh, you know there's a lot of first time speakers here that this may be the first time they're covering the top uh, their topic as well but it's giving it a chance to kind of get into public speaking. Um, but the key thing is making sure that you can talk about it in a clear and compelling fashion. And as I mean about compelling, you need to draw people in. This is uh, one of those cases is as you're giving a talk that uh, you're doing so in a fashion that keeps people wanting to listen. So they're not going to go leave to go to the bathroom, uh, grab a soda or something like that. Uh, essentially, the CFP response is your sales pitch. So the other thing of what people are likely to uh, consider is, is as I mentioned about before, is about it being compelling. So why is your um, topic rather important? Um, you got to drive some excitement to it. Uh, you got to drive people to want to learn more about it. It's kind of a tease. Uh, it should drive to a point, not just a ramble. I'm rambling on right now. Some people are more to the point. Uh, but imagine this is shark, the, the Shark Tank, if anyone's seen that show. Uh, but you're trying to pitch your talk. Uh, you want the reviewers to invest in you. Uh, what you're saying, you need to hook them on an idea, uh, and you you got to talk about how how it's useful, how it's interesting, uh, gin up some excitement for it. Uh, sometimes a little bit of theatrics goes a long way, um, but you want to make sure it's something that they're willing to invest their time and and come and partake in. Uh, you don't want to give away your entire hands, so uh, you you kind of have to write this out as a tease, add a little bit of mystery, but make it clear that you you have a, a goal or you have some outcomes to it. Um, finally, if somebody's going to come to your talk uh, and sit through it, they better get something out of it. Um, one of the things I was really hard on when I grade is making sure there are audience takeaways. Uh, good talks and presentations should not be vanity activities. They should not be there for your own ego or edification. They're there because you're to inspire or to pass on knowledge to people. Um, if you can do that, that makes you a good speaker. And it also helps you when you're forming your ideas for your CFP because you have an end goal. 
um, and outline uh, outline what you plan on sharing. Uh, it should nail at least three to four of these takeaways uh, for an audience member. If you're down to one, you know, maybe it's a specific technical topic, but that's one of those cases where uh, uh, you need to maybe broaden it a little bit. That way you can touch all those different levels. If it's an executive, a highly technical person, or a general audience member, at least you know uh, have a takeaway for each one of those potential people coming. Um, you made a really good point. You have to tip your hand a little bit, but not all the way. You just need to give everybody a hint mm -hmm. of what's coming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a key thing about uh, CFP submissions, and I learned this the hard way. Uh, my Oddly enough, my first CFP submission was to DEF CON, uh, geez, 10 years ago. Um, I was really upset because I went in and I, I saw somebody essentially give the same talk I submitted for. Uh, problem was, is that I wasn't looking at sample submissions. So mine was kind of scattershot. So nowadays, uh, you can probably go to a CFP site and they actually may have a sample submission. I know ShmooCon does, DEF CON does, a lot of them have sample submissions. They will outline the format, the kind of content, the length of content that they actually want, uh, maybe a, a sample way of kind of the language. Uh, I know further on down in the notes here, uh, there's sometimes formal and informal uh, submissions. Uh, you know, if you're at a, a local conference or a user group pitching a talk, there is a lot more informal than if you were going for a, a national or international conference or something like that. Um, but some of these CFP responses uh, may be more involved and may require a certain format. I know, uh, you know, talking with Nicole when we're setting this stuff up, she actually is a CFP reviewer for something I submitted to this year, um, and it was much more academic than I'm used to, uh, and that's much more professional. So, uh, you know, what folks who had to submit stuff for the, the Diana Initiative, it was a very simple form compared to what I had to submit for this, this one. So it was a lot more work. Uh, but don't be daunted by, you know, seeing that there's a lot of stuff that you've got to do. That just means that, uh, you know, the, the, the organizers are putting some thought into the conference, that they want to make sure that the people who are submitting are going to match up to what their goals are for the conference, but also make sure that you are vested in uh, presenting good content uh, for their eventual audience. Um, and they, they want a certain caliber of talk. So it's, it's a couple of gates that you've got to walk through and, and pass through. But uh, in the end, it'll actually help you as the presenter, uh, making sure your ideas are organized, but also uh, allowing the reviewers to quickly, uh, I hate to say judge, but evaluate and categorize what they want in for the talks. Again, it may seem like a lot of work, but make sure you complete the submission, make it a complete proposal. Don't, I hate to say it, don't half-ass it, uh, because if you don't half-ass it, uh, you have a better chance of being selected. So uh, if you want to make sure you're going to get a chance to talk, do the work that's required. Uh, finally, the, the, for me, the, the goal of the uh, CFP is the audience. Uh, if it's a very widespread audience, uh, you know, you, you may not be able to figure out who the audience is. Sometimes the committee may list uh, who it is specifically. Uh, you know, for me, uh, I've submitted uh, to some talks, or I've actually been invited to some, where they do an audience breakdown. So they'll, they'll tell you um, how many people are executives, how many people are mid to senior level, how many people are entry level, uh, the numbers of people that they've had in prior years. Um, so it gives you an expectation of what uh, is there, but then concurrently it's for you as you're delivering, like if you're going to be giving a keynote in front of a thousand people in the morning, you may need to present your uh, thoughts in a, a wake up session. I, I had to give one that was the first thing in the morning. I drank three Red Bulls. Uh, I was hyped up. I was dancing around the stage. I was trying to be funny. I made people laugh. So that, you you got to kind of understand like as you're giving the talk and where you're giving it, uh, you know, what those expectations are. So that's the key thing about the audience. Um, and the other thing is, too, is, as I mentioned, uh, it may require a more fa professional approach. I know, you know, I'm here in a, in a hoodie and a T-shirt, Nicole's in a dress. Uh, other people, you know, may be in a business suit or so forth. Uh, that's much more professional sometimes. In some conferences, we're up there in jeans and a T-shirt. Uh, sometimes I've seen people kind of come up in Urugumi costumes and give presentations. I, I gave one at ShmooCon that was in my Doctor Who outfit, mainly because the room was cold. But the idea is understanding that uh, certain conferences may uh, require you to be a little bit more professional in their approach. Uh, and then, uh, two, the, the challenges right now with COVID is that um, uh, everything's virtual. So, uh, you know, like we're dealing with now is, is trying to uh, get across our ideas in a, a format where we don't get to see the response of the audience. Uh, with the CFP, you also, again, don't know who's going to be uh, coming to it. So uh, how you present, uh, both for your CFP response and more formal language, more... Um, I'm trying to think of the kind of the words for it, but uh, generally, uh, you know, we're not using the colloquial terms, uh, idioms, and stuff like that uh, to try to connect with the reviewers. Uh, you may just be more, may need to be more direct. 
be more Or go ahead and just explain oh, whatever goodness. abbreviations that you use. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize I had this extra slide. I was going riffing on these other ones. I was surprised. Uh, you know, another thing for the, 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 the fit here is, is actually learning to hack the talk. Um, you know, talking with Nicole again here with her, uh, 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 previous experience too, is sometimes, uh, the uh, conferences have themes. Uh, they may pick one that's there every year. Uh, I know, uh, ShmooCon and DefCon obviously have, uh, the own, their own themes and then they try to get talks that kind of address that. Uh, but others may be, uh, conferences based on the type of location that they're at and the kind of people they'll draw. So like DC, very much policy driven, uh, politics, uh, New York will be, uh, finance and technology sometimes, San Francisco definitely much more on the technology side. Um, but then too, is also understanding the audience they're appealing to, uh, something more general. Uh, so it could be like a career talk, uh, or a track or a specialty. I know, you know, sometimes I like going to a conference where they may have taken a chance on somebody that is totally like unexpected for that conference and it's really unique and, and it draws people in there. Um, but then again, too, is uh, uh, sometimes uh, they they may, as we were talking earlier before, uh, they may riff on the same talk. Uh, sometimes there's talks that get revised every year uh, and you go back for like an update. Uh, recently, we did one for ShmooCon where we gave a, a talk on uh, voting uh, uh, security and then we were able to give a second one at DEF CON. So it was given an update and and those draw people in as well. So, be, you know, one of those things you can kind of draw uh, almost a trilogy, in fact, some times with talks, um, but be aware that, that that's available to you as well. Uh, and uh, reference that in your CFP. Uh, sometimes they may ask if this talk's been given before in another form. Uh, if it's an update, they may want exclusive rights. So they may Security want conference, rights, so. don't lie. They will out if you have submitted it somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, again, like we're talking about with the uh, the kind of the tease, uh, be a good magi uh, magician. Uh, you know, you kind of make it tantalizing, throw it out there. Uh, the tease, the prestige, I guess it would be. Uh, you know, th uh, you're there to 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 satiate the need of the reviewers to find something interesting for their conference. But also, um, you know, when I've been on, uh, you know, we've been doing organizations for the schedules for for uh, conferences, is finding where to put these things in after lunch. Uh, <laughs> if if it's a lunch, people are going to fall asleep. You want something to kind of uh, get people excited. So if you're one of those ones that you do a good pitch uh, as part of the CFP, uh, not only will you get selected, but you may get a really cool spot. Um, you may get a bigger stage for that. So uh, be aware of that when you're actually creating that. And, and the review committee should be able to see that as well. Ah, and finally, some things that won't pass muster. Uh, I am really, really hard when I uh, review CFPs because I, I have a good BS meter. Uh, one of the things that, uh, besides this list here, I hate sales pitches. I hate veiled uh, vendor pitches. Oddly enough, I work for a vendor, so I can kind of sense, sense that out. Uh, talks that are all about you yourself. Uh, uh, soapboxes are different than uh, bitch sessions in a way. Uh, if you're going to go up on stage and complain about something, you know, maybe you should do that at the bar, not up on stage. Sometimes they're good. Sometimes they're rants. I know there's a couple of people that are really good at uh, uh, the rant talks. I think um, uh, awkward hugs guy. Um, <laughs> uh, Jason is really good at, uh, he has an occasional rant thing and, and those are, those are talks that are actually trying to um, kind of share a topic, so they're not just kind of a, a soapbox. Uh, also, the hot, one of the challenges for CFP reviewers is the hot topic of the year. I think last year or the year before was all about MITRE ATT&CK. We will see 20 talks suggesting to do MITRE of ATT&CK, and it makes it very hard to basically uh, suss out uh, which ones will be the best because sometimes they're covering the same topic. So you're going to have to make uh, those stand out if you're uh, picking a hot topic of the year. Uh, finally, uh, one of the ones there is victory laps. Uh, I did a thing, I want to brag about it, and I'm going to do it as a talk. Not always as compelling, um, a little annoying at times, uh, but sometimes uh, people are really good at, uh, you know, explaining a thing they went through and it's entertaining. Um, I know um, a Malware Jake uh, did one recently here at uh, Besides Nova where he was talking about m and stuff. While they were assisting with m and uh, he made it in an enter entertaining fashion. So it wasn't a victory lap of having gone through it. It was basically explaining, here's the challenges, but done in such a way that it was actually really, uh, really interesting. So, um, but yeah. So circling um, back to yeah, your earlier uh, those point, are things I if you have key takeaways for the audience, yes. you can make it work. Yes, definitely. So how do you win the hearts and minds of the CFP reviewers? I will tell you 100% how to win my heart. You have to tell me who you are presenting to, 
what you are presenting them and why it is important and what they're going to take home. If you can do all of that and put a little cute hook in there, I'm sold. I will read yours in much more detail than a lot of the other ones. So there's going to obviously be a variety of people reading them, but you want to be interesting. It doesn't matter if you think the topic is the coolest thing under the sun. You've got to make sure that that not only your excitement comes through, but some of the coolest aspects of that thing you're interested in come through. Otherwise, people aren't going to be able to relate to you if that's not an area of their interest. It's okay to go ahead and find out what the theme is and then pander to it a little but if you slather it on too much, uh, we see a lot of that and it just isn't that appealing. And good content will always outweigh clever. We have seen every cute title and every cute buzzword there is come through every year, whatever the hotness is. And it, it wears on you after a while. You're like, okay, that's great, but is there content behind it? So if you have a snazzy title, cool, but have the content to back that up. And again, it's like a resume. People are blowing through this and they're not going to have a ton of time. It's slightly different if it's a more academic conference because they do assign less reviews to each person because they are expecting them to be a bit longer, but you still are only expected to give them a certain amount and they will usually tell you what that amount is of data. And so you need to, in that small area, small being relative, be clear be a little bit clever and get to the point and say who it is, what it is, what they're going to go home with. And if you can try and make the story that you're trying to weave clear so that they can see, here's how you're going to take the audience through this path. Here's where you're going to take them to. And here's why it's going to be valuable to them. Yeah. And sometimes uh, a, a lot of the CFP uh, submissions, and it wasn't necessarily, I think, in our example given here, uh, it's good to have an outline. Uh, if they give you slots for 20 minutes, 45 minutes, 90 minutes, uh, if you're up there for two hours, God forbid. Um, it's really good to write an outline uh, with timing on it. If you're going to spend five minutes on a topic that gives a chance for a reviewer to understand how deep you're going to go on a subject. Uh, it's not just for the reviewer. It's also for you to understand, can you actually get through all of this? And we'll touch on this in the next slide. We'll touch on this in the next slide. So whether you've done one CFP, zero CFPs, or you've done hundreds of them, there's a couple things that you can remember that the birds outside are very loud is one of them. Um, <laughs> have one of your friends review your submission before you send it. If you review it yourself over and over, you're going to miss some stuff. And those spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes aren't that big of a deal, but they will catch people up and distract from the flow of your submission. If your friends are doing CFPs, look at theirs, review theirs for them, but also you'll get an idea and you can improve your stuff together. And if you don't get accepted, a lot of conferences will give you feedback. It may take a while and it's probably going to come after the conference once they've all recovered, but a lot of times they will share what the committee had to say. And please don't be upset when you get, hey, this was a good talk in a lot of your items. Go back and critically think yourself, okay, if this was a good talk, let me look at the lineup that happened. Why didn't mine get in? Did you pick a hot topic that maybe ha had a huge pool of people to go against? One hack for Grace Hopper conference that they will tell you right in the session they usually have at Grace Hopper, if you ever want to submit there, is which tracks in a given year had fewer submissions. And so you will have a higher probability of getting accepted if you follow all the directions and do a good submission in one of those tracks. Make sure that you're not overconfident, but believe in yourself. You know something. You can share that with someone. And a conference is definitely one of the venues you could possibly do that. And also, don't try and put 100 pounds of things in a five pound bag. It just, it isn't going to work. And when we look at, you applied for a 45 minute slot and it's a 20 page submission, that's just not going to fly. 
Well, that's unless like us where we have 14 slides trying to get them in 20 minutes and still having a lot to say. Uh, but again, too, uh, mentioned, uh, you know, Grace Hopper has uh, some stuff like that. There are some tracks at B-Sides Las Vegas, which will help speakers that they may have not uh, actually been accepted, but they were good enough to make the cut. I know Heidi at ShmooCon, uh, if you request to have feedback, they'll get feedback. That's how I got in uh, because I got her feedback. And when I submitted again, uh, I took all of that feedback in there. And I've been going to the conference pretty much since it was founded. And then I finally got in the next year because I took in that feedback. So, uh, you know, if it's offered, take it. And if you're really interested in speaking, that's the best way to do it. Uh, it's it's almost like precision uh, bombing of, of the, uh, uh, the CFP process. Process. And then we're going to wrap it up here. So, and key yeah. things to take oh, home yeah. are do it and then do it again. You can make new revisions. It's okay. Don't feel, don't feel bad. Uh, that's the one point I want to stress. Yeah. And for me, like I said, I'm a professional speaker now. I, I used to be an executive. I got stuff down. Now I have to go out and talk about it. Uh, I feel really bad that I sometimes repitch a talk, um, but the idea is it helps me refine a lot of my ideas. In fact, actually, the one I'm giving tomorrow was given in a different venue. I've learned from that. I was listening to it in the car today to kind of get better at what I've got. I'm reorganizing my slides because uh, I think the message can come uh, come across better. Um, so, you know, when you have that opportunity, do it. Uh, again, and revisit the ideas. Nothing's static. There's nothing in our industry right now, especially uh, information security, that is the same from day to day. Um, so, you know, always go back. Uh, sometimes uh, it may need more data. If you're doing some research stuff and it doesn't get accepted because it's potentially incomplete, wait a couple months till you get some more data uh, and, and, and complete the stuff and resubmit it. Uh, it may get a chance. It may be in a better venue, too. Uh, that's a key thing about all of this is that, uh, you know, if it may have missed the mark for one, it could be exactly what you need for another and actually be a better experience. Um, and don't be hard on yourself. Like, I know there are some people who won't get it. I, gosh, I'm trying to remember, you know, everyone used to complain about like, it's, it's uh, such and such conference rejection email time. And they would, you know, there'd be a whole list of people who you knew submitted for these conferences. And then they would just post about it on Twitter about not being accepted. And, you know, they're, you know, luminaries, say, in the field or folks who've known to be speaking. And it's just sometimes, you know, as we joked about, like trying to get your content, uh, you know, 10 pounds of content, a five pound bag uh, at, a, at a highly submitted to conference that, you know, say RSA, um, Grace Hopper, limited slots, lots of people interested in it. Um, and uh, even some really good talks to get rejected. So it shouldn't be a necessary reflection on you. It just could be the circumstance of, of what gets programmed. Um, but regardless, uh, again, you know, have confidence in yourself. Uh, I, I know I took some opportunities here when I knew who folks were who submitted uh, that uh, I, I wish they could go back and uh, update while they still had some time. I reached out to them and said, hey, really good talk. Uh, if you have a chance, go back in and, and, and modify it. Um, and that's, that's the best way. And and I said, even if you do submit your abstract and it's in before the, the time, uh, if you can go back in after letting somebody else review it uh, and make changes, that's another opportunity as well. So uh, nothing static. And uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and sometimes too, for me, I've gotten to be a better writer and CFP submitter by getting on CFP review committees. So if you want to learn how to good uh, do good submissions, uh, be the one receiving them. Uh, so that's my, my words of wisdom. Run. Thank you.